deceivers, pathological deceivers, people with an agenda, they are spectacular at remaining hidden for a long period of time. If look they have you, you doing one of they, these smiling, like, oh, I, yeah. I, I've remained hidden. If look they, at you. <laughs> I'm looking at him going, he's smug. He's thinking, I've got all this remaining hidden. Oh, there's $400,000 missing. He'll never notice. I do the, I do the income. My wife and I. I are you just thinking that, like, <laughs> so, so somebody, somebody who is deceiving for their for their actual for game, their game. Like not for their just for game. attention. No, for so their if we think of the, the idea of what do people need in life, they need to feel a sense of significance. That's one of the human needs. Yeah. So by saying I can see the astronaut's turkey sandwich incorrectly, <laughs> no, it's like, nuts. like <laughs> I guess as a school child. How old was this? Was okay, this so I was in I was in high school. Oh so my goodness! So I'd we're be, not uh, even talking uh, 16, 17. Okay, because you you know there's imagination. There's kids who just have an yeah. imagination. Yeah, they know they probably know. I would imagine a seventeen year old. But yeah, like a six year old. I get that. Okay. Yeah, a seventeen year old. That's not just so freaking much. weird. Well, I wonder what happened to him. I'm not going to look him up because mm -hmm. it'll make that magical thing okay. happen. But I just have to give an example boy. that's so unbelievably stupid. He worked at the Red Barn restaurant when I did too. And that was flipping burgers and stuff, 15 cents a hamburger, 20 cents for a cheeseburger. But oh, here's wow. the thing. I said to him once, we saw, we used to test it, Bruce Gibbon and I, you know, got to stay away from those trees. Oh, got to stay away from those Oh, hands. yeah, yeah, Bruce yeah. Bruce Gibbon. That was he a couldn't a stand this guy. They didn't ago. like each other. But Gibbon would goad him just to get him to lie for his own amusement. And there was the Bell Labs rocket plane, the X-15. Okay. And so Gibbon would test him. <laughs> and a cough. He'd say to him stuff like... Have you ever seen the X-15? You ever see pictures of it? So right away, this guy goes, yeah, yeah, I've seen pictures of the X-15. Then totally deadpan goes, matter of fact, I've flown the X-15. So we, we act like, <laughs> we, I'm not kidding. So we act like we believe him. We say, really? Yep. How did that happen? Well, one day I was working the counter at uh, the Red Barn. This guy came in. He was an American general in full uniform, visiting Canada. He said, you look like a nice guy. How do you like a ride in the X-15? They took me down to Nebraska. He said they actually let me take the controls and I flew it. This guy, like, do you think he might be insane, Chris? That's just crazy. Okay. Because I don't think he flew it. <laughs> Obviously. So back to <laughs> circling back. Okay. There are people who do this, let's say, for attention because there's no money in it for him or anything like right. that. There's no, not even fame. It's just attention from his buddies. Right. People do who are skilled is the, we're all in this together. Oh, scam. yeah. Now, gee, this, I think you this, haven't heard that one in the this last is used, 12 months. Well, yeah. And this is used to get people to uh, comply with unusual requests. So let's say um, a woman is bringing in her groceries. Gavin DeBecker talks about this security expert in the gift of fear. A woman is bringing her groceries in and she, the guy comes in the front door at the same time and is pouring rain out. And he goes, boy, we're really being hit by this rain, aren't yeah, we? we? We, the and we, yeah. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, those of us in this building, it, it's been a real problem with the flooding, hasn't it? And they're getting a yes set happening, but it's based on this idea that you have some sort of commonality of experience. Right. Then the next thing he's offering to help her carry her groceries to the apartment. Yep. The next thing he's broken in, gagged her, and th the rest is horrible history. Right, right, right. And this sort of thing happens Based on this, because work. you create this false rapport. False around, rapport. Oh well, I'm I'm in the same building as this person. We live in the same city and are experiencing the same so rain. So somehow there's and a commonality. And now help me carry my groceries, right? And this is something Kurt Vonnegut calls the Grand Falloon, mm -hmm. which is you know about that? No, nope. it's really interesting. I'm sure you're going to tell me. I will, Chris. I'm <laughs> thinking it's going to be really interesting. Shut up. <laughs> the Grand Falloon is a is a coin term, and it is people who have a meaningless, stupid relationship based on something irrelevant. Like we're Oldsmobile drivers. Oh and yeah. We all yeah, have a club yeah. and we all talk about Oldsmobiles, meaning that they're somehow all alike and similar because they all like freaking Oldsmobiles yeah. or are hypnotists or whatever. And the grand falloon will draw people into believing they have commonality when yeah. they don't. Now you'll hear this in subtle ways. A guy contacted me a number of years ago by my on my business phone. Deceiver and his name was Tim. Okay. And he said something about, oh, you know, you're great to talk to you. I mean, you know, haven't seen you in a long time. I said, well, where do I know you from, Tim? He sounded like he knew enough oh, about me. Oh, you, yeah, okay. He said, we met at Lulu's a number of times. Lulu's was the biggest bar in North America. Mm -hmm. Huge. And I used to do the, do the gigs there. And he probably knew that. He knew that. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you know, I worked there for a while. And it sounded familiar enough. I got drawn in yeah. into this. And then he'd call me from time to time. And then all of a sudden, he 
sends me a letter, a handwritten letter, and says he needs to borrow $40,000 right away. Well, that's compelling. And I went, what? Threw it out. It's then, that guy I know. Yeah, from that, that guy point. I know. Yeah. The Grand Falloon. We yeah. both know Lulu's. And then he phones me up and he leaves a message. Hey, buddy, I need your help with this. I got to call in a favor. I need four, 40 grand right away. I'm counting on you for this, buddy. I'm counting I on you. I phoned him. I said, yeah. I don't even know who the F you are. Like, don't phone me. <laughs> you again. actually called well, him back? I didn't back. say F. <laughs> <laughs> but you called him back? I called him back. I would just be thinking, <laughs> No, but I said, delete. stop bothering me. Yeah. I didn't want him calling again. But that's a classic thing. That's the, the Grand Falloon. We're all in this together. We, we uh, know each other from Lulu's, right? The Grand Falloon. Where does that come from, that Kurt, Kurt Vonnegut wrote. wrote oh, you this. probably said that. He's an author. Yes, yeah, I attention. said it many okay. times now. Yeah. Well, twice anyway. But So the, we're all in this that together. That is fascinating. Okay. The next one is, I wanted to say, one of the keys of deception, according to Dr. Lieberman, is little or no eye contact. Right. So you're talking to the person, and they're, they're doing, you know, not, not making eye contact because it feels like you're seeing through them. Yeah. Is stop making insane eye contact to make a freaking point. You're lunatic. <laughs> and another thing is when you enter a, a conversation with someone about an important topic, look for their initial reactions, micro expressions. You'll see them in the first couple of seconds. Okay. So if the person, that'll show you the real feelings. Person says, oh, uh, by the way, I've got freaking colon cancer. And you see a little smile flick on the person's face. That's weird. That's their actual response. That they think it's funny? Oh, he's trying yeah. to join you. Yeah, we can't because he's standing <laughs> Here, in I'm the testicular. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh, there you go. Standing in the stander. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I'm saying? People will give it away with the initial flash expression. The micro expressions can last like a quarter of a second. Okay. But they're worth watching. Okay, now, interesting. So if somebody lets it a little smile, it's like they're glad that this guy's got colon cancer or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see it all the time. Weird. And a great way to calibrate lying. Remember, we use the NLP method mm -hmm. of eye accessing cues. Mm -hmm. If you master the eye accessing cues, they won't tell you when the person's lying, but they will tell you when they've gone to the construct part of their brain instead of recall. And watching on talk shows watching guests good it, opportunity it's a great for practice time. right because you see oh yeah my career is going great and they said lying 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 yeah, person yeah, yeah. person's on the way down you know like it's it's interesting to see another thing is when you think someone is being a deceiver so you ask them a question like um oh you ask your teenage kid well where were you last night and they give you an answer you use the power of intentional silence because when you use intentional yes. silence with someone who's telling the truth, they don't care. They won't care and they'll just stop talking. Right. But, but someone who's lying will fill that fill awkward silence, silence with, with more unnecessary detail. And the, of course, what you do then is keep silent. Yes. Because it, Let it them flushes it all out. And proverbially all, dig their own hole. Yes, yes. And, and what Lieberman pointed out that's really cool as well, is if you ask someone a question, mostly on a grand concept. Okay. Let's say something like racism. Okay. You say, well, do you have any racism um, in your mind? Are you, are you a racist person? person? Now, the person who's telling the truth will answer immediately. They'll say, no, I'm not at all. They won't have to think about it. Yeah. If there's a pause... They're trying to figure out the best possible way of answering. And even if they answer yes and then pause, they've answered yes to stop Which you. is like they're, they think it's a lie. They don't think they sound convincing enough. So they need to fill in more detail yes, and to convince themselves, convince themselves that they sound, they sound convincing. convincing. And I saw this, Chris, Chris one of the two times um, I was called for jury duty. Once I got out of it, the first time I didn't. And I was actually the jury foreman. And we are bound by law. We cannot say anything that happened in the jury room. But I can tell you what happened beforehand. It right. was a crack cocaine case. And it, beforehand, they were screening the jury. So right. the defense lawyer and the uh, crown attorney, uh, you know, guy, <laughs> we were all in the courtroom with the judge and they're calling us one at a time. And they said, you know, number 42. And I stand up and this is the question he asked me. The defense lawyer said, will the fact that my client is black affect your, your verdict in this? And I said, not in the slightest. I'm answering instantly because I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And they went, accept, like, just like that. Other people delayed. Oh. Um, said, no, no, we don't want that one. Yeah, because they did, they, <laughs> they do this for a living, right? I so they, Sorry, guys. That's all right. We'll yeah, edit that yeah, out. Yeah, 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 right. There we go. They detect that pause. They just it's know. problematic. They don't know the specific person, so they're not <laughs> calibrating to that particular person's behavior from right, experience right. with that person. But as a pattern, people 
they're just falling into this idea that, okay, generally speaking, if someone pauses like that, yeah. maybe they are. If they, they start are, pausing in the pausery, they are. They jack the freaking pause. We don't know why the pause is happening, but no. it could be that they're trying to convince But it's a red flag for we, them. Yeah. yeah. So it's dismiss, right? We want the guy who instantly congruently answered no. It right. will not affect my decision. Now, if you're dealing with someone and you're not sure if they're being truthful or not, listen, my voice is rough today. You'll notice that they are often using self-calming gestures. Oh. They mm, might it's touch the yeah. center line of their body. Mm. They might touch their face or their hair. They may rub their hands. And what this is doing, well, you're, you're an NLP guy. What are they doing? Oh, they're giving themselves kinesthetics. To, For what purpose? To comfort them, to feel confident, to feel calm. And based on what? Protected. Okay, here's the answer I'm actually looking for, folks. In in NLP, you cannot have... Oh, the externally, internal at the same you. time. So Thank you. I'll that, give you a yeah. chance to bail yourself yeah. up. All right, so there you go. Extraordinary coffee. Yeah, so the idea that you cannot feel an external kinesthetic and an internal kinesthetic at the same moment in time. Or you even, can switch even back in any and, system, you, you can't can have You can typically switch back and forth with, with some switching, like Jack the Switcher right, ability. Right, in the switchery, yeah. But let's say I cannot feel anxiety or discomfort or mistrust or maybe fear or whatever it is. Right. If I'm focusing on an external kinesthetic, an external, right. Some external sensation. Yeah. Right? This is a re like, it's not really external. It's, but it's externally by me applied. Yeah. It's a, a real physical feeling versus an emotional feeling. And this is so right? powerful. Years ago when I was a therapist, one of my first clients was an NLP practitioner was got her to deal with her anxiety by her task was to keep cleaning her house hmm. and really notice the feeling of the sponges and the warm water and the brushes and the, and that got her attention out from this pathological. And that would make anxiety. sense. It did make sense. Yeah, Chris. Because if you internally are feeling these issues that are not good and you replace them with externally applied feelings that you can appreciate warm yeah. bath, for example, ah, if you could just lie in a warm bath and appreciate that feels really good. That's really soothing. Yeah. And, and think too, mm. uh, the Greek worry beads, konvoloi, that's how they work. Yeah. It gets the person's the attention on fiddling the stress and, yeah. balls. And that makes tons of sense. Stress. Oh, there yeah. you go, ball stress. <laughs> yeah, all of that, a stress ball. All Dude. right, that makes a ton of sense though, right? Now, how are we doing time-wise? When people start giving unnecessary detail as a detection <laughs> as a, mechanism. As a Ken Sweatman story as a yeah. detection mechanism. Well, I know what you mean. You mean if you ask someone something, and they're answering you. Yeah, so it sort of ties into the pause, but it's not the pause. It's just when you ask them, well, what were you, um, actually, that, let's talk about the unnecessary detail and the testing backwards, testing lies by. Okay, well, we'll yeah, get to that running of out of sequence. We'll and do that, that yeah. next. But this one about the too much detail, it is tied to the um, intentional mm -hmm. silence. Right. But when you ask someone something that's true. You know, did did you eat those last cookies out of that drawer? Whatever. Yeah, did, yes, did I did. Did you take that five dollars sitting there? You say no, I didn't take it. Yeah. You tell the truth. You just leave it. Yeah. You don't you don't feel any need but to if explain. You did to, if you did eat those cookies and you're denying you took it, the $5 bill. then yeah. you're starting to say, well, you know, the last time I was in the kitchen, I saw that there were two cookies like you'd be noticing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I know that the kids were running around here and I saw that our daughter had such and such Way a friend too much over information. And, yeah. Whereas if you're Def telling the truth, you're comfortable. Yeah. No, I didn't eat them. But if you keep going and keep going, it's because you mm -hmm. feel like you're not being convincing. Yes. It's a, it's a common one. Interesting. Yes, it Interesting. is, Chris. Okay, so now let's talk about, and then we can probably wrap running this out one of up. This is, yeah, let's talk about this running an event classic, out of sequence. This is a classic police interrogation method. When someone gives you a story mm. and you don't know if it's true or not, and you want to test it, run it out of sequence, especially if you run it backwards. So you got a kid who says, you know, a parent says, well, where were you last night? Oh, I was over at Dave's house. Then we went to the mall for a while and we were playing uh, pinball there. And then we went over to the public pool, but we didn't have our bathing suits. We went back to his house and we watched him. Way too much info. Right. So right away, it's suspicious. And so you have to put on that... Bing, I've got to remember some of these details yes. in order. So you say you went back to the mall, you know, yes, we did. But with what happened before that? Well, I said we were at the swimming pool. No, but then you were at Dave's house. Yeah, that was after the swimming pool. Well, what did you do just before you were at the pool? I don't remember. You don't have to be harsh. You just, yeah. I, I don't remember what you said. Well, before that, we're at the mall. And, and what happened just before that? I can't remember what I said. See, if something yeah. really happened, wasn't really crying purely for effect. Um, <laughs> If someone really remembers something, like you know what you were mm -hmm. doing before you came downstairs, you know what you were doing last night because it actually, actually happened. happened. That's but if right. you're making up an excuse, as soon as you run it backwards, they'll have a tremendous job 
difficulty trying to remember what yes. they said. So the, here's the secret. If you wish to lie more brilliantly, if you have to, and I hate to teach you this, but I'm going to, rehearse your story both directions. Yeah, rehearse your story. or both like we were saying, directions. We were talking about this. Um, Say both directions. Both directions. Thank you. Right. Both, if you know the story or if it actually happens. So if yeah. you need to, like if you're planning a surprise party or something and you need to create a cover, just actually go through the activities so that they literally happened. Yeah. So if you need to go out to pick up a gift, let's say. Yeah. And you don't want to have to answer questions and be caught in this sort of situation. Do something else instead in addition to picking up the gift. Go to the hardware store. Look for that uh, those finishing nails that you needed Are for the back project. What I'm getting whatever here. This it guy, is. He's way too that. good at this. Do way that. Way too good at this. Then you can just leave out the, oh, I also went to the flower store to pick up that bouquet that I <laughs> brought to my neighbor's house to hide in their garage so that yeah. I can. You and you know, leave that get, out of the Yeah, story. you just leave that out completely. Yeah. Have an actual cover story. And there's your white lie. It yeah, comes that's back clever. to the That's clever. Right? That's clever. So, hide the fact you bought it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's your the rotor. That you Moving the, parts. Yeah. That, that you, yeah, there's your perique. Yeah, you don't want your go. wife to know you're smoking. Overly it. specific. Now, interestingly, I want to give you two final ones that'll wrap us up. They're okay. both quick. One that is a real indicator of deception is inappropriate anger. When you confront someone about something and you say something like, you know, I just, I'm talking to you about this because I want to know what's going on. I told you not and, to bring that up. Well, no, they, <laughs> the typical one is, well, that's what I want to know yeah. too. <laughs> aligning with your anger, it's because they've got something to hide. And yeah. you'll run into that one. The final one I wanted to mention is barrier creation. This is a really cool one. This is another police interrogation uh, trick. When you're doing an interview with someone across a table, it could be casual over a mm. dinner table with a friend or family member or someone you're maybe thinking of hiring for a job or something's happened in an organization, internal shrinkage, whatever, they have to interview people. Watch out for barrier creation. Woman puts her purse on the table between the two of you or the guy sets his cell phone and his wallet on the table between. They are setting in their mind a psychological barrier that makes them feel safer. Really? And okay, all interesting. you do is move it off the table. Hmm. So it's completely open again. The person being interviewed is setting up the, the barrier? The person who's being deceptive. Oh, the person being deceptive. put a barrier in between. So if you were interviewing me and I put this there, you might the determine- The way your iPad is now. You yeah. might determine, oh, he's being yeah. deceptive. That's okay. right. You're putting it between the two now, of you. Now, why would you move it? What's the purpose? Because you're opening them up to the direct communication again. Okay. You don't want a barrier between you. It can even be holding a, a pillow- Something so like they're this. more likely yeah. to be honest if you remove the barrier or no, what? No, you're putting more psychological pressure on okay, them. You're not you. letting them hide okay. behind the barrier. So they're more likely to be exposed to their lie, let's say. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's one more I want to give. That's just okay, so okay. good. Yeah, this is This good is stuff. Dr. Lieberman's, and it's a brilliant one. He's an Ericksonian hypnotist. He's also a, a classical psychologist. But what he says that I love, he said, when you accuse someone of something, Jacques. Listen to Jacques. <laughs> this is a really interesting one because this is one I'd never heard of. When they answer, if they use contractions in their initial response, they're probably telling the truth. Interesting. If they don't use contractions, they're probably lying. So this is where you have Bill, let's say uh, Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Mr. President, did you have sex with that woman? I did not. That, that's yeah. it. He doesn't say it's like the, yeah. okay, so it's, it's the not emphatic. It's not that the, it, what you mean is if they're expressing something in the negative, did not versus didn't. Yeah. Or can't or whatever. Okay. So if the person says, I didn't have sex with her. Yeah. That that's most likely true. But, but if he says, I, I did, did not, not have sex with that's that That's like He's probably it lying. Really it's really declaring over it. the top, right. too declarative. Yeah. So deceit's going on all the time, boys and girls, but you won't find it here because we hide it yeah. much too well. Would you would you say I have never also versus I've never? If, if somebody's answering a question, oh, have you ever X, whatever X is? I mean, no, I've never Yeah, X. that would be a contraction. I have never that's X. Right. Much more declarative yes, as that's right. a which statement. Means, which means probably, probably lying. Deceitful. I did yeah. not know that. That's there a good one, go. isn't it? Well, I did not know that. I did not know that. Interestingly, you, 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 and I you just, know what's interesting about that? Yeah, yeah cuz Lieberman said, people who are lying What is that for the audio people? Never, I was they pointing at the camera. seldom point their finger if they're lying. Really? Because this is very this is very uh, a gesture of making a point and honest. So, so when I looked at the camera and said I did not know that, the fact that I didn't use a contraction was counteracted by the fact, fact that, that I you pointed did at point. the camera. Okay. That's right. But so the pointing over lying don't usually point when they're okay. giving their excuses. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right.